All of us have been there. Every single one of us have asked that internal question. Am I worthy of being picked, selected, chosen? You know, our traumatic kickball example, it plays out in our day-to-day lives. A lot of times we can, we can feel the tension that that young girl felt in our marriages. You know, when we're married, we have a lineup of priorities like our classmates. And as a spouse, we're standing there waiting to be picked. Now, all the priorities we have, they're good things. Business, work, school, kids, personal needs, um, hobbies, all kinds of things that we enjoy doing that enrich our lives. And, And then we have our spouse. All cannot be chosen at once. Our selections must be carefully prioritized in order to correctly communicate the true intention of our hearts. Yeah, so we put together this series called I Choose You because we believe and we figured out over the years of marriage that the ability to choose and prioritize your spouse is the foundation that you build on. And so we want to welcome you this weekend to the series I Choose You. Uh, That video is... um, You know, it's probably very similar to all of us here. It's one of Melissa's childhood experiences, and I think we all had that childhood experience as well. And uh, and so it is our hope that uh, that through this series that you'll find some some tools that will help you, practical steps that will help you, whether you are dating or you're widowed or you're uh, married or you're divorced or wherever you are in life. These are principles that will help you in every stage of relationship. And not only are they spiritual principles and practical uh, principles, but they're foundational principles to every relationship. And so, you know, this series is, it's for everybody. If you're uh, single, dating, uh, divorced, widowed, it doesn't matter where you are, there's something that God has for you in this series. So we've got a couple of things happening over the next few weeks that we want to tell you about. Uh, On March 19th, we're going to be hosting a marriage night. And this is for engaged or married couples. And we want to invite you out. It's going to be a ton of fun, you guys. And I know that video is like real moving and like a little bit of a heavy moment. But we are going to have a lot of fun today. And we're going to have a lot of fun at this event. It's actually designed to laugh, to open a new dialogue with your spouse, to learn some principles um, that you can take home um, and apply to any and all relationships, and we're going to be throwing it back, okay? So we want to see your wedding photos. Uh, ben and I yes, have we do. been married a long time. He's going to talk about that in a second, but we want to we want to see your wedding photos, and I actually bought, brought a couple of our wedding photos with me today, and I'm hoping that we might be able to show them. Um, yeah. There's baby Ben and baby Melissa, you guys. Baby Ben and baby Melissa. And so, uh, listen. It's amazing. She looks better today, and I look worse today. I'm not sure how that happens. <laughs> there is a lot of history between that and this. And, um, and I hope that over this series, we can tell you all about it. We can encourage you with what we've learned and yeah. um, that God is going to do something in your life. But look at Do not miss March 19th. It's going to be awesome. It's $20 per couple. Go out today by the fireplace. There's a setup. I believe that Lori will be out there um, helping you get set up and uh, and signed up. If you want to sign up online, you can go to generationchurch.com forward slash I choose you and get signed up today. If you want to send in your wedding photo and you don't mind if we laugh a little bit and uh, poke fun. Make fun of you at your expense. Yes. Um, And basically we're going to do like um, how it started and how it's going. Um, and you don't want to miss it. But would you send your email, would you send your uh, wedding photo info at generationchurch.com? It w- is going to be a blast. You don't want to miss it. So Yes. All right. So, hey, let's just take a moment. And I just want to give it up for our online church family. Man, we love you yeah. guys so much. Those of you that are new to Generation Church as well, can we just give it up for all of yeah. those joining from around the world and our new family members here? So today we want to talk to you under the title, The Power 
of choice, the power of choice. And in every marriage, you have the power to choose, to choose what you say, what you do, how you respond, how you prioritize life and kids and work and, and marriage. You have an immense power in your hands. And after 19 years of marriage, Melissa and I have figured out uh, how to use the power of choice to make our marriage amazing. Now, it's not perfect, right. but man, we have a great marriage. We will be married 20 years on August the 4th yeah. this year. And needless to say, we, we've learned a few things over uh, the past 19 uh, years, going on 20 years. And, and it's our hope that we'll be able to share some things with you over the series that will really help you transform your relationships, current relationships, future relationships. I want you to be captivated by what's going on here. I want you to dig into it. I know there might be some pain involved as we talk yeah. about relationships, but if you'll push past the pain, yeah. I promise you that God is going to do something. So just, you know, like you would binge something on Netflix, just binge the next four weeks of this series, be engaged, be involved, yes. and God's going to do something in your life. I know it. You know, I also believe that this is a moment of reset for some of you. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I, yes, if you're married, yes, I believe it's a moment of reset for you. Um, if you're single and maybe you've made some choices that you don't really love, I believe it's a moment of reset for you. God wants to bring a fresh start in your life. He wants to wipe the slate clean. And if you're married, um, we're going to give you some homework later on, but we want to encourage you um, to talk about some things, to open up, to share some ways that you can choose one another. And I was praying for you on Tuesday. I was praying for this moment right here. And I felt that God really laid on my heart that, that, that th there is going to be just this moment where he's going to bring peace, wholeness, and cleanliness of heart to whatever your situation is. And, you know, when God does something like that and he shares something like that to you or with you, um, he's also doing that for you. So I was praying that for you on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, um, this fine-looking gentleman over here and I got the opportunity to um, wipe our own slate clean. We had to talk about some things and talk about some things that had built up that maybe we didn't even see, we didn't even know. Um, and yet what God wants to do in you, he is also doing in us. So I want you guys to know that this is the real deal. And just because it is good doesn't mean it is easy. Yeah. And um, so we're going to invite you into our own journey as we talk about the power of choice. It was great. Wednesday, I cried so much. <laughs> <laughs> Just felt so clean and, and fresh and He's released joking. after that. I actually cried. And he was like, we, yeah. we need to go somewhere else. Let's come. Come on. You're crying. Let's go. Yeah. It was anyway, good. It, it was, was important. Good. And, and here's the point by that is we all need those resets from time to time. Yeah. We all need to make the choice to have those conversations. You know, when you get married on the big day, it's a big decision. Yeah. And in some ways, we choose each other in that moment, and then we stop choosing each other after that. Yeah. And it's kind of like the old adage, the old joke, like, I told you I loved you on our wedding day, and if it ever changes, I'll let you know. But that doesn't work. We, we have to continue to choose. And it's amazing because the things that we did to date, the, the pursuit that existed in our relationships in, in that dating season, it's like somebody turns that switch off once you get married. But the things that you did to get that person to love you and respond to you and choose you, you have to continue to, to do. You have to continue to choose to prioritize that person in your life. And so, you know, just like in the video, not being chosen it, it creates a, an emotional strain. Like, like when we choose other things and prioritize other opportunities over our spouse, that begins to pull the building blocks of that relationship apart. Yeah. But on the converse, when you begin to choose and prioritize your spouse, to choose them and prioritize them over other things in life, you add building blocks back to that. And we see in Ephesians chapter 1, in verse 3, that God does this for us. It says this, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us. Turn to your neighbor and say, God chose me. 
turn to your second choice <laughs> and tell them God chose me. <laughs> How does your second choice feel right now? That's the question of the day. God chose us, and God chose us, and it changes us. It changes how we feel. It changes something on the inside of us. To know that you are chosen, it changes you. And God chose you regardless of where you are, what you've done, who you've been hanging out with, what kind of crazy stuff you're involved in. God still chooses you in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and he forgave our sins. And he has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. So as we get into this idea of, of choosing each other, prioritizing each other, Melissa, tell us what, what does being chosen do for us as a spouse? You know, I think that you know, we watched the video, and, and I, how many of us can relate? Could you just raise your hand? Could you, have you ever been there on the ball field, and you were like, please, please pick me? See, God knew that that void was in your heart. He knew that we are programmed for affirmation. And he's the God in Ephesians chapter 1 who explicitly communicates um, his selection of you. He recognizes that married or not, single, dating, divorced, whatever you are, you know, uh, maybe, maybe you're in high school or you're, you're, on your, you're in college, you're on your way to looking at what these relationships are going to be like. Um, it's, incur it's important for every single one of us to know and recognize that the need that we have to be chosen, the need that we have to, to, to be affirmed cannot be fulfilled by another human. And if we could, he would tell us. He would have written, you know, I chose you and then your spouse chose you and that's going to take care of everything you need. So it's all good and lean on that person and try to extract every bit of longing that for, from your soul, for your soul, from them and, and put it on the inside of you. And he, he would have explained that to us. But he's really simple. He just says, I chose you. And with God, because, you know, we don't see him and we're not on the ball field where he's the captain and he specifically picks us first, we, we seem to generalize his choosing. But God looked at you specifically, individually, uniquely and said, you, I choose you. And I love you as if you are the only person in this world to love. See, the thing about God, what affirms us when we get to know God is that he knows us fully and still loves us fully. When we're married, as close as we can be, you don't know each other fully. Believe it or not, I don't tell Ben every single thought what? that enters my brain all day long. I don't. I'm sorry. Well, neither do I. <laughs> And when we, can, when we can live into the idea and comprehend the idea that God chose you first and allow that to fill every void of your soul, the more you value that God chose you, the less you value the rejection of people. Wow. And we've got to prioritize. And, and before we, before we, ex, before we um, find affirmation from any person, we've got to find it from God first. Being chosen by God, growing closer to God, and recognizing the immense value of that will address many of our needs. And I think, you know, a lot of times we try to get from our spouse what only God can give. And I can think of some times, especially when younger in our marriage, when, you know, I would just be having a bad day feeling really insecure, really uncomfortable, really just not liking everything, wanting to clean everything in my house and throw away all my clothes. And you ladies, you with, y'all are leaving me out here. I know every single one of you have been there. 
And there have been times where I've tried to lean on Ben for what only God can give. And I want to encourage you, ladies, if you're ever in those moments where you're just dissatisfied, just get away and spend a few minutes with God and allow him to address those deep needs of your soul. You know, that's what happens when we're chosen by God and when we recognize what he does for us. When we're chosen by our spouse, I believe that that when we are consistently prioritized and when we consistently prioritize them, it builds trust. And trust fuels intimacy. Man, did you hear that? (laughs) Oh, y'all, that's week three. Don't, y'all better come back, okay? Mark your calendars. It's going to be a good one. But trust fuels intimacy, and intimacy obviously isn't just physical. It's emotional, it's relational, it is physical, and, and, and con- consistently choosing each other just begins to fuel that trust that um, just helps bring about that, that deeper knowledge of one another, that enjoyment of your relationship, and the respect of each other. So choice is extremely important in our relationships. And the reason why it is important is because it builds a pathway that gets you to a place of relational health. So when you choose um, to prioritize something else over your spouse, you you begin to develop a pathway of divergence. And over time, not overnight, but over time, you'll find that distance begins to get there. It's like a decision tree. Anybody ever done a decision tree? If I do this, then this. If I do this, then this. If I do this, then this. And if you keep making choices that are apart from your spouse, eventually you'll find yourself way, way, way down the road. See, nobody finds themselves on the brink of divorce overnight. You just don't wake up one day and you're like, hmm, I think I'm done. It doesn't happen that way. What happens is choices have been made day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and those choices keep leading us to a place. The scripture tells us this in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. It says, today I have given you the choice between life and death. Life and death. This is talking about our lives, and it includes our marriages. Between blessings and cursings. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life. Oh, that you would choose life. So that you and your descendants might live. Proverbs 18.21 would go on to say it this way, that the power of life and death are contained in your tongue in your choices and and what you do. So choice is one of the most powerful aspects of human life. And and it all goes back to God as our creator. He doesn't force any of us to follow him. He gives us a choice. And that choice, when we make it, it illustrates our love. Yeah. And when you make choices to prioritize your spouse, you are demonstrating and illustrating love. So good. You know, I think that there's a lot of us out here who could look at your life and go, you know, I didn't have a lot of advantages when I got started in life. You know, any adults feel that way? Like, you know, I just, I just had what I had. And I know I personally did not have one healthy example of a marriage. Not one. I, I didn't, there were no two adults that were married in my life, in my extended family, that modeled what a healthy, respectful, loving relationship could look like. And sometimes choice is all you have. But that's good because choice is all you need. And my hope is that this message today inspires you that if you feel that your marriage is relatively average, relatively mediocre, if it's in decline, or, you know, if it's pretty good and and you want to take it to the next place, you're single and you're like, man, I want to have an incredible marriage when I do get married, Um, this is the pathway. The thing about marriage, especially in the Christian context, is many times we can get confused uh, when it comes to the idea of oneness. And we can think that the, the combination creates limitation. And I'm really not trying to be like preachy and alliterative with that. I'm trying to be honest with you because I've seen couples, when they get into this idea of oneness, they sort of lose their identity and they stop they stop bringing their individual best to the relationship. 
And I want to encourage you, whether you're a husband or wife, you have the ability to activate on the inside of your marriage. You don't have to be limited by your spouse's choices. You don't have to be limited by what they bring to the relationship. You can be the tone setter. You can be the bridge builder. You can be the champion of the quality of your relationship. And, um, you know, many times we, we shrink back from that because we develop this attitude that says, well, they don't. He doesn't. So I won't. I'm going to tell you a true story. A few years ago, uh, I was having a conversation with a lady about her marriage, and she was telling me about all of the things that she was dissatisfied with and all the problems and issues. And then she finally came down to um, a question, and she said, well, Melissa, what do you do in your marriage? And I just decided, I told her this, and this is just something that I had learned because I had lived watching marriages, my parents were married for 38 years when they, my dad passed away and then my mom died a few years later and um, they were married for 38 years and I do genuinely believe that they loved each other but they had a lot of problems and their marriage was not really a healthy one. Um, and so in observing that uh, throughout my childhood and college and that type of thing, I, I decided that I was going to be the best spouse that I could be regardless of what you do or do not do. And so this lady, she asked me this question, well, what do you do? And I told her that. Well, I just bring my best. I, 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 if, if, if we're escalating into an argument, I try to de-escalate it. I, I, I gave her some scripture about who, what I try to model my life after and live into as it relates to who I am in my marriage. Because I genuinely believe that when I get to heaven, I'm not going to be married. And God's going to ask me how I stewarded the time and the person and the resource that he gave me in this marriage. And so I just want to encourage you. So I, I said that to her, and she ended with this. She said, well, Melissa, does Ben do that? Nope. <laughs> and I said, I don't know. All I know is that he's a great spouse, and I love him. But how he's positioned himself, how he has decided to be and become in our marriage is really between him and God. And I'm not there calculating and checking and comparing and tit for tat on what um, he does and doesn't do. And that depends on what I do and don't do. Yeah, you can only be, go ahead, give it up. Yes. You can only be responsible for your choices. You're not responsible for their choices. And if your spouse is making bad choices, you can't allow their bad choices to affect your choices and cause them to be bad. Otherwise, you're going to be in a really negative and toxic situation. And what happens is, is if you will begin to make good choices, it will cause the relationship to trend in the right direction. And you be responsible for you and let God use that as an example to your spouse, and it will begin to draw things closer together. Amen. I really believe that, um, that, that we can be tone setters in your marriage, and I want to encourage you to, to activate today and, and really try to out-choose each other all week. Um, so if choice is such a powerful tool and it's so awesome, why don't we do it? Why, why don't we choose correctly all the time? Because long-term choices cause us short-term pain. But short-term choices cause us long-term pain. And God is calling us to make long-term choices today so that we can have a long-term marriage that encourages the people around us, that provides all of the joy and intimacy that God intended for marriage. Yeah, and man, I would just encourage you that not making a choice is making a choice. Yeah. Not prioritizing is making a choice. Being neutral as a husband and a leader is making a choice. And that choice is so loud. It echoes through the heart of your kids. It echoes through the heart of your spouse. You're choosing every day whether you realize it or not. And so to encourage you to, to begin to step back and say, okay, I know I'm making choices. Let me evaluate what these choices look like. Are they good choices, bad choices? Am I prioritizing or am I not prioritizing? 
my spouse. There's always pain along the way to progress. Yeah, that's good. There's always pain along the way. It's always going to cost you something, but, but wherever there's pain, the result of that equation is that there is some sort of gain. And if you'll push through and you'll begin to prioritize and make those steps, you will find that over time, not overnight, but over time, your marriage and your relationship will draw closer together. So we wanted to take the last few minutes that we have and, and just give some practical steps to choosing or prioritizing your spouse. So here's just a statement that I want to make clear to everybody, our online family watching from around the world as well. Listen to this statement. We have to choose to pursue your spouse in the way that they want to be pursued. We have to choose to pursue our spouse in the way that they want to be pursued. Now, what happens a lot of times in life is we choose to pursue them the way we want to be pursued. Yeah. Men, if, if physical attraction is your thing, then you're all the time trying to pursue her that way. And she's like, get away from me. What's wrong with you? I just want chocolates and some roses and, and a conversation, for God's sakes. <laughs> And if you just have a conversation, you probably would find that that would lead, that choice to prioritize her would lead to a choice that she makes back to you that prioritizes you. Come on, somebody that's good preaching. Amen. Amen. So practical. Choose to, to pursue them in the way that they want to be pursued. So here, here's just some practical things. How do you do that? Number one, ask your spouse how they want to be chosen. How do they want to be pursued? Just to have the conversation. And we talk about this all the time. Like, what can I do to pursue you this week? What a powerful, powerful. You actually don't even have to pursue them at that point. Just asking the question will change many of your marriages. Yeah. But then taking that information and beginning to apply it will cause you guys to come together in love and unity like never before. Yeah, that's good. I would also say being willing to articulate what matters to you. So if your spouse asks you, how can I pursue you this week? And you're like, I don't know, you know, expecting them to know is going to set you up for mismanaged expectations and disappointment. Okay. Don't wait on them to surprise you. Be honest. And even if the, even if honesty is a little bit difficult right now, try it anyway, risk it anyway. Give some space, safe space to have those conversations where you can really talk about maybe what's missing or what you would like to be chosen in your relationship. Yes. And I would just encourage you not to defend yourself. So if your spouse says, well, I'd like for you, first of all, don't attack. And second of all, don't defend. So if someone's like, well, because you never do this, you're only setting your partner up for defensiveness. Yeah. Don't do that. Be kind, be gentle, be loving, be willing, be yeah. open. And like Ben said, be a safe space um, that is respectful of what that person is asking you. And the third thing is to be cognizant of the choices that exist in front of you. And I, I know as a man, it's easy for us sometimes to just completely miss that. Like there are things that she needs that I'm like, I have no clue about. Any other clueless men in the, in the room today? Like we're clueless. Like I had no idea you needed that. Oh my gosh. If I had known, I would have probably not done it anyway because <laughs> I'm a man. Men, we, we've got to be cognizant of the choices of, that we make, the, the choice to go hang with the guys, the choice to go to the gym, the choice to work and bring that computer home and sit on the couch or watch TV, the choices that we make. Th there are pivotal moments, and every single one of those choices you make leads you down a path. Yeah. We've got to be cognizant of the choices that we have. And then be intentional to follow through. You know, when you... Uh, have a conversation like this um, and you begin to really seek to understand the heart of your spouse, when they are vulnerable, they're risking. And it's, in, it's so important that you make the intentional effort to follow through on what they said. Even if they don't, which I know could be incredibly hurtful and I really hope that not, none of that happens across our congregation this week. But we want to encourage you to elevate your spouse, not above God, but almost above everything else. Doesn't mean you don't go to work on Monday. 
but you go with the emotional prioritization that you mean more to me than anyone else in this world. And I'm gonna continually communicate that through my conversation, through my attitude, through my follow through. And hopefully that creates a relational intimacy that maybe you haven't experienced in a really long time. So here's our homework. If you're married or you're dating or you wanna be, here's your homework. I want you to take this week and I want you to have the conversation with the people who are important to you in your life. If you're not dating anybody and you have friends, ask your friends this. Ask your kids this, ask this question, how can I choose you this week? It's a simple question, how can I choose you this week? And then listen, let that person articulate for you where they are, they'll locate themselves, they'll locate the relationship for you and they will give you steps to take choices to make that will help you. And then I wanna encourage you to take some time and just set it aside to just talk. Just take one hour this week, set aside some time and just talk, talk about anything. Talk about your vacation desires for the year. Talk about your lifelong dreams. Talk about the things that bother you at work. It doesn't matter, just, just take some time, at least an hour and set it aside. Put the kids away, put them outside, whatever, in a trunk. <laughs> Not really. Hire a babysitter, do something. And just set aside some time uh, just to talk. And then I wanna encourage you to set aside some time this week to pray together. Just pray. It doesn't have to be an hour of travailing or anything like that, just, just a couple of minutes. Just take some time and pray and then do something fun. Take some time to recreate. Do something that's fun to you. If you'll begin this week to make these small choices, you'll find that that God begins to draw this relationship closer. Even if you have a good marriage, it'll make it better. So take some time to do that this week.